Okay, so now that we've set our primary color correction, I'm ready to get into some secondary color correction. And this is where we're going to begin isolating our subject from the background, and also where I'm going to draw some additional attention to our subject's face by lightening the area of shadow that's being cast by the hat that our subject is wearing. So to get started, I'm just going to add a fourth node and bring that into our node tree. Adjust these over. And in this node, I'm going to bring up the brightness of our subject's face. So to do that, I'm going to add a power window. I'm going to add a circular power window. And I'm basically just going to resize this power window so that it roughly fits over the face of our subject. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to use the lift gamma and gain to just bring up the brightness in this area. So I'm going to switch back to my three-way color. And I'm just going to bring up the gamma. Remember, that's my midtones. And then I'm going to bring actually down the gain just a little bit to kind of even this shot out. So if we take a look at the before and the after, you can see that that adjustment has done quite a bit to just bring up some brightness and draw some more attention to our subject's face. Now, it's a subtle adjustment because realistically, the subject is wearing a hat, so their face should be somewhat in shadow. So all I want to do is just make it a little bit more pronounced in the shot. I don't want to add so much brightness into our subject's face that it looks unnatural. And now that I've done that, I also want to add a little bit more sharpening into our image. And I'll try to make this a little bit larger so perhaps you can see what that's hap what's happening here. And just zoom in. And in my Blur and Sharpen panel, all I'm going to do is bring this radius control down a little bit. And you can see that's making our subject's face a little bit sharper. And once that's done, all I have left to do is track our power window. Since our subject is going to be moving over time, they're going to slide in and out of the window. So to do that, I'm just going to go into my tracking panel and track forward. And you'll see as I do that, the power window connects to our subject's face and stays with him as he moves. Next, I'm going to add my fifth and final node. And this is the node that I'm going to use to isolate my subject a little bit more from the background by blurring out the background so that everything's not so evenly in focus. And so I'm just going to add another node, drag into the node tree. So now that I've added my fifth node, I'm ready to add in a new power curve to isolate my subject from the background. And so to do that, I'm just going to click here, and this will start a new power curve. And you'll notice when I click that, nothing shows up in the viewer, unlike with the other power windows. When I click on them, you'll see I have an object that shows up right away that I can adjust. And the reason for that is because I actually need to draw on the power curve in my viewer. And it can be a little bit easier to do this if we actually zoom in on our image to give us a little bit more specific control. And all I'm going to do is just click around my subject to draw the power curve that will allow me to isolate him from the background. So I'm just going to do that by clicking and adding some points. And then to close the shape, I just click where I started. And that's going to create my new power window. Now, you'll notice right here in this spot, there's a little bit of weird bending happening with the power curve. And that's just because the inside and outside softness need to be adjusted. So if I sort of increase the inside softness, you'll see that sort of unfolds that wrinkle in my shape and makes it nice and even. And then I'm going to bring down the outside softness. And I'm also going to bring down the size of my shape. And really all I need to do now is just sort of adjust the shape by using these control points to more closely match my subject. And that looks pretty good for this example. Obviously, when you're doing this for real, you want to make sure that you're setting the, the blur and the edge of your correction nice and even so that you don't have any weird spots of overlap in your image. The next thing I need to do is just make some adjustments to my background. 
And to do that, I'm going to first invert the power curve that I just made, and that will make the changes happen to my background and not to my subject. And then I'm going to bring down the gain a little bit, just to darken out the background and keep some more attention on our subject. And so now I'm going to go into the blur panel and I'm going to adjust the radius in the blur panel up and that will add some blur into my image. And that's looking pretty good. And now if we take a quick look at the before and the after of this, see that's before we added the correction to this node and this is the after. And you can see that by bringing the exposure down and adding some blur into the background of the image that we've really been able to bring some attention to the subject of our shot. So this was our starting point, and this was the original Cinema DNG. And this is after we added our first round of primary color correction, just basically working with a setting exposure and getting that a little bit more correct. This is our second node for primary color correction. The third node was for evening out the exposure of the image a little bit so that the left and right sides matched a little bit better. In the fourth node, we brought up the shadows on our subject's face and add a little bit of sharpening just to create a bit more detail there and separation from the other elements of the scene. And in our fifth and final node, we used a power curve to separate our subject from the background. And then we added in some additional blur and brought the exposure of the background down so that our subject would have a little bit more attention placed on them. And that's our final look. So as you can see, we were able to add some exposure, focus, and color adjustments to this image that really helped to bring the attention to our subject and adjust some of the problems that we had in our shot when we were filming. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that this series of tutorials has been helpful for you.